Hi, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Immigration Talk. We're going to talk about five important things you have to worry about, unfortunately, and think about when you're going to do change of status in a student visa in the United States. This is when you have some sort of visa category and you want to study F1 student visa, and you do change of status. It's a minefield of how many issues that exist. We did a video about this a year ago, but we got a lot more information, a lot more details that are more hands on to help you through this process. So having said that, let's get it started. I'm immigration lawyer John Kasravi of the JKK Law Firm and with my wonderful associate Anya Segeva over there on the East Coast. Anya, thank you for coming on the show again. Hi John, thank you so much for having me here. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm excited to talk about this because it's a case we get a lot of people asking about and there's a lot of problems and people get really surprised when the, the craziness and insanity of the request for evidences and the denials come. So we want to prepare you, uh, everyone who's watching for that. These are for people who are in the United States, already have some sort of status, and they want to do change of status, um, for example, from a tourist visa, B1, B2, H1, B, H4, uh, E2, L, the rest. Uh, so it's really important to talk about this. You can't be a parolee in the United States to do change of status. You got to leave, probably do an embassy interview. Uh, and switching from a J1 in particular, I just want to make some notes. There's a two-year home residency requirement many times that prevents you from uh, switching, but you may or may not have that two-year home residency requirement. That's a separate issue we're not going to talk about. What's the first thing people need to worry about and be, be conscious of? when they're going for this change of status to student visa in the United States? Well, obviously, number one thing is if you want to switch to student status, you need to find a school, find a program that you would like to pursue, uh, but not too soon. Uh, there's still uh, this thing called this 90 day rule, which USAS officially uh, took out of from their policy manual, but it's, it's kind of still there. When we're talking about this kind of cases, it gets uh, too bad that uh, USAS, when they send requests for evidence, sometimes they ask the clients um, for the proof when they contact the, the school for the very first time. Mm. And if it was too soon, uh, according to USAS, that might get problematic. Exactly. Yeah. So, and even if they do approve it later on, the person leaves the U.S. and goes to the embassy for a visa, um, they could be denied there for changing status too quickly uh, and saying that oh, you had you committed visa fraud or misrepresentation. You didn't really enter the U.S. with the intent, for example, to be a tourist. You really wanted to bypass the embassy and get a student visa, a student visa status. So that's something really important to be mindful for. Another issue that pops up are the financials, which is really obnoxious part, is having to document you have enough money, according to your I-20, the paperwork your school gives you, to be able to support yourself to pay for tuition and for room and board and everything like that. You need tons of uh, documents regarding your, your finances and show you have that money, preferably in cash or something like that. Uh, if it's a foreign account, show conversions uh, rates and that you could actually send it here and, and how you would do that. And then if an RFE happens where they want more information on the finances or more likely because student visas are taking change of status or taking so long to get nowadays, might be six or nine months later, you'll get an RFE asking for continued I-20 or new I-20 to show you're allowed to go to that school. And with that, they want continued evidence of financial uh, ability. And so you still have to show you maintain that amount. There's no rule that says you have to maintain the amount you showed originally, but they want to see you have this money continuously. It's a major headache to keep a chunk of money in some account sitting there, but this is the kind of stuff we have to deal with, Anya. Any notes about that, or should we go to number three? Well, uh, yeah, generally, USAS says if you provide, for example, uh, bank stuff, they say bank letter is not enough. They want to see your whole like transaction history for the past six months or even one year. Okay, mm -hmm. If your funds are overseas, you would need to show that you can actually transfer these funds from uh, the um, uh, foreign country to the United States, and you will not have any issues with that. Uh, so there are very um, a lot of like small nuances that can really mess up the case. Uh, yeah. So please be, be, be careful <laughs> with, uh, with that. Yeah, and speaking of be careful, there was an issue of changing status uh, if you're like on a tourist visa and maintaining status. They changed it up. Can you talk about what that new rule was with regard to bridge uh, filings and all that? Um, yeah, uh, so historically, um, uh, not even historically, but a few years ago when Trump was a president, they created this new uh, rule saying, uh, yeah, if you file, for example, uh, for, for a change of status from a tourist visa to a student visa, you need to maintain your underlying status all the way up until adjudication or like uh, 10 days or 30 days before that, something like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, so you had to file change of status to F1 and simultaneously you had to file uh, B2 extensions 
one, two, or three, depending on how long your petition, your uh, change of status petition to F2 uh, was pending. So this is no longer the case. They no longer require you to kind of file this um, underlying uh, extensions for like uh, tourist visa uh, tourist visa status. Uh, so uh, what's important now is that you must file for this change of status while you are still have your B2 um, status valid, meaning while you still have your I-94 um, expiration date um, before the uh, I-94 expiration date. So this is very, very important. If you file even one day after, USAS gets your petition one day after, that's it. Uh, this, um, it still can be pending for like a year and a half, but eventually it's going to get denied just because of that. And important note is that when I'm saying that you have to file, USAS have to, has to has, uh, have your petition before your I-94 expires, not yeah. that you send it by mail. Okay, they have to have it. They you have to have receipt notice dated before your I ninety four expiration date. Exactly, and then finally, uh, interesting thing that popped up is because of the delays that are happening, um, USCIS will want an updated I twenty to show that the school is still accepting you, maybe for a later quarter, later semester. Um, you need to maintain that same I twenty CVS record, the same number that goes with the CVS record. And some schools were hearing back from colleagues that. They'll only renew the I-20 like two times. And after that, they won't. They'll have a whole new CVS record. And so USS does not want that. So you got to make sure and talk to the school beforehand that they'll let you keep renewing it, pushing back the start date of the school as far as possible without canceling it. So you don't have problems later because, again, these cases are taking a year sometimes to get adjudicated. So you might have to keep pushing back the start of school year in like multiple times. You want to avoid that problem from happening. Uh, and notes on that, I guess it was not the last one. We got one more thing that I'll talk about about residency, but Anya, your notes on that. Uh, yeah, so basically you talk with your school, you ask them, hey, please, can you defer the admission date? You know, while your application is pending, making sure that they don't cancel, they don't terminate your CVS record. Because again, in this request for evidence that we see in this kind of cases, USAS specifically asks, please send us new I-20 with a new start date and the same CVS number. For you and for all your dependents, if you're applying uh, together with your family. Yeah, it's so a shock. Yeah, it's a horrible thing to see. Like we haven't had the issue, but again, we, we, we monitor the whole immigration space. And we have people that come to us with these errors. So we see like everything that happens. Uh, and it's some horrible stuff that happens in this space of changing status. And the last one is just maintaining your residence abroad. So they want to know that you're not going to be here temporarily. A student visa is a temporary visa. So you need to keep documentation. That, and that's kind of hard if you're here. Um, for example, if you're here on a, on a work visa for five years, not going to school, you may not have maintained a home back then. And you can explain that. It's not the deal killer, but they do ask for intent to go back home and evidence you've, you've had back home. And luckily, we usually have people have homes back home or, or investments or something like that to show that yeah, there's something to go back to. Uh, but it becomes a major headache. Right. So ties uh, to home country uh, are very mm -hmm. important. Specifically, uh, USAS they want they want you to um, like write up even like a personal st statements sometimes you know uh, showing that why you want to study what is the reason behind it like why um, after you're done with your studies why you uh, plan to go back to your home country what you're gonna be doing there you know so all this um, all this kind of um, uh, kind of stuff. Yeah, big headaches. But hey, if you do it, you get to go to school here, get to finish it up and get your education and be here longer. So it's definitely worth doing. If you're interested in, in doing the change of status process, contact us as soon as possible for a private consultation. My associate's email is Anna at jqklaw.com and I'm John Kastravi, info at jqklaw.com. We happy to help. Just uh, got to get the process started sooner than later. Anya, thank you so much for coming on the show again. Look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you for watching this educational program. To get the latest videos, click the subscribe button and the notification bell icon. Also, help us help the immigrant community by liking this video and sharing it with your family and friends. You can also find us on other social media sites like Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn, and Twitter, where you find the latest updates on immigration news, policy changes, and tips. Be safe and God bless. See you soon.